So according to Brad Stainbrook at Stainbrook NFL, uh, the Ravens uh, have been in contact with one Jarvis Landry. Let's read his report verbatim. He said, free agent wide receiver Jarvis Landry has not heard from the Browns as of late following the team drafting two wide receivers in the NFL draft per league source. I'm told another team in the AFC North, the Baltimore Ravens, have expressed interest in Landry since the draft ended. And I don't think there's going to be any one of you that would be surprised by that at all. I'm not surprised by it. I know most of y'all are not surprised by it either. This was expected. I think literally every Ravens fan, especially after the draft, they traded away Hollywood. We all expected, okay, they definitely drafted and receiver now. They didn't do it. They've been signing a, a lot of undrafted free agents at wide receiver. Big body guys at undrafted free agent wide receiver too, by the way. But it's just in the Ravens to add that veteran. Um, and, and I don't, I've been saying that I, I don't expect them to go into this year just with their young guys. I, I, I don't expect that. Like all their receivers, second year Rashad Bateman, uh, third year Proche, third year Duvernay, second year Wallace. Like, they ain't about to just run with that and be done. No, of course they're going to add a veteran, but who? Who is that veteran going to be? Now, um, Jarvis Landry, what could he possibly bring, bring to the Baltimore Ravens? Well, one thing, one big thing, leadership. And with Jarvis Landry, uh, leadership will go such a long way with this group. Now, of course, it ain't all about leadership because you, you got to be able to play on that field, too. Because you, you could be the best leader in the world. But if you're sorry, ain't nobody going to hear your message. But Jarvis Landry is not sorry. Um, Jarvis Landry, uh, he would be the sort of uh, under, underneath receiver. Catch a lot of short stuff, then take it the distance. And that would actually change a lot and help with the short game. Because the short game is something that the Ravens need a lot more of. Because we know like Lamar, Lamar is a home run hitter. He is a home run hitter. He wants the deep pass each and every play. He like, go long. And then Giro like, hey, go even longer. But anyway, um, Jarvis Landry being that underneath type of guy, uh, he would help just take the Ravens passing game to another level in that aspect. Um, another thing, too, I was just talking to my guy JT about this earlier today. He brought up a really good point about leadership. Uh, and Lamar Jackson in the Ravens offense. These guys, a lot of these guys, they look to Lamar for leadership. We know Lamar's not this big outspoken leader, anything like that. Uh, but Jarvis Landry is. He would bring, bring that veteran presence in the huddle. Uh, he would bring a sense of um, just sort of not even peace because there ain't, ain't no peace in no NFL game. But he would be able to sort of calm the guys down because these moments are really big. And Jarvis Landry, he's been in a lot of big moments. He's been in a lot of big spots. Uh, because he, again, he is a veteran. Uh, another thing about him that he would bring to the Ravens that they were certainly missing last year, <laughs> and everybody got hit, hurt with it, uh, was health. Jarvis Landry, now last year was an anomaly for him because he did get hurt last year. But usually Jarvis Landry is always there, always available, can always play, always. Um, so his health is is his wealth, and he's very wealthy. Um now, uh, two things. One thing, I wonder if this is a smoke screen for something else. I wonder if this is a smoke screen for somebody else. I wonder if this is a smoke screen for a, a different potential move. And I don't know what it could be, whether it be trade, whether it be them really trying to sign somebody else, whether they really interested in a, in a whole completely different player. Because you know, again, these reports, they get leaked for a reason. Now, Another thing, and this was the first thing that came to my mind, especially when I saw who the report was from, I was like, oh boy, here we go. Are the Ravens really about to get burned again? Are the Ravens really about to get used again as leverage? The report came from Brad Stainbrook. Again, his at is Stainbrook NFL. Let's read his bio so y'all could feel what I'm saying. Covering the Cleveland Browns for the OBR slash 24-7 sports. And I know some of y'all, well, covering the Cleveland Browns, uh, okay. Like, Jarvis Landry's been a Cleveland Brown for the past couple of years. Um, we would think that reporters from the Cleveland Browns, they would have the insight on Jarvis Landry and where he's planning on going or who he's heard from and whatnot. And that's true. But it has been said 
for a while that the Browns, especially after they made the change at quarterback to Deshaun Watson from Baker Mayfield, it's been said for a while that the Browns were interested in bringing Jarvis Landry back and even possibly bringing Odell Beckham Jr. back. We know Jarvis Landry, he didn't want to leave, but he also didn't want to take a pay cut. So I wonder, the, and this is the big reason why I'm not like, oh yeah, let's go! Sorry for anybody in with the headphones in, my, my apologies. But I am very, I'm cautiously, I'm looking at this from a, a cautious point of view. And I'm feeling like I'm somebody that's been burned enough already this offseason. And I know a lot of Ravens fans feel the same way. We've been burned enough, we've been tried enough this offseason, we've been used enough this offseason, and we are not gonna fall for this the only time that we're gonna get excited is when we see pen to paper because the ravens they were interested in bobby wagner what happened leverage he goes to the rams the ravens were interested in zadarius smith what happened well he agreed to terms with the ravens but ultimately signed with the vikings leverage the ravens they were interested in Emmanuel Agba, or was it Larry Ogunjobi? I think it was one of them to always get them too mixed up. But they were interested in him, and well, you know the rest of the story. You know how this thing goes. So I'm just, and a lot of us again are just cautiously optimistic. But I just wonder if this is going to be another leverage move, another move to where it's like, oh, well, hey, these Ravens. They interested in me, and then the Browns are like, whoa, 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 Ravens out of all people interested in you, Jarvis Landry? Get me on the phone with his agent right now. Bring him back. Give him an extra two mil. Bring him back. We don't want Ravens getting him. Because stuff like that happens, especially within a division. I mean, Steelers, <laughs> Steelers like, boy, you know, Steelers and Ravens, they, they are petty with each other, man. Of course, they, they go back and forth with the uh, – in the games and stuff, but it's a game beyond the game. It's also a game within the game, but it's a game beyond the game. Because in drafts, Steelers know Ravens want somebody. Steelers slightly interested in that person. Ravens about to pick. Hey, nope. Go get him. Go get him. Hey, Pittsburgh, let's draft that guy. Mine. Ha! Got him, Ravens. And the same could be said about the Ravens with the Steelers, too. Ravens, oh, Steelers interested in them? Oh, we slightly interested in them. You know what? Since Steelers are interested in that person, you know what? We're that much more interested now since we know that Pittsburgh's interested. You know, get him. Get him. He's ours now. Ha! How about that? So with the Browns, again, this could be Jarvis Landry's camp putting this out here. This, this could be his camp putting this out here like, hey, Browns, you don't want me? Guess what? I know somebody who does. And it's somebody who you are going to have to play at least two times a year. So if you don't want me, hey, I got somebody that'll take me right away. So try it if you want to. We've been talking for a while. And if this is how you want to end things, try it if you want to. And that guy had a brown scrambling and fuming like, oh, my goodness, what do we do? So, again, I'm, I'm not even sure what to really make of all of this. But I'm not going to get overly excited. If the Ravens add him, cool. Cool. I wouldn't be mad at that at all. I wouldn't be mad at them adding a Jarvis Landry. Now, I do still think that there would need to be just a bit more. Because as far as a downfield threat, who would that be? Who is that? And I feel like that's a big part of Lamar Jackson's game. And I feel like it should continue to be a big part of the Baltimore Ravens game. Having that downfield threat, that speedster. Right now, the Ravens, they don't really have that. They got some guys who, 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 got, who, who can move a little bit, but that true speedster. Like Duvernay, he can move. Rashad Bateman, he can even move a little bit too now. But they're not those downfield threats like that. So that's one part of this whole receiver equation, in my opinion, that I feel like would be missing. Now, with a Jarvis Landry, it would add quality uh, to the Ravens wide receivers. It certainly would. Um, but I just feel like even if they do add a Jarvis Landry, there should still be more. 
So we'll see what happens. Now, one last thing before we get out of here, because I know a lot of people, they... <laughs> oh, hey, Jarvis Landry, he got beef with Marcus Peters. He got beef with Marlon, Marlon Humphrey. They ain't got no real beef, man. They, they ain't got no real beef, man. They on the same team, they will be completely fine. All that is, that's just that competitive trash talk. That's it. That's it. It ain't no real like, oh, man, I hate you. I don't like you. No. They not on that, man. But, you know, Marcus Peters, I don't know. Marcus, cause Marcus Peters like that, man. Marcus Peters don't play, man. Well, you know, you know Marlon Humphrey ain't on none of that. Marlon Humphrey done choked Odell Beckham Jr. out. But I'm sure he would give him a hug in a heartbeat. Um, but, but Marcus Peter, that that's the one that you really gotta watch out for. You know, over here calling people homegirls and all that, and then going on the IG live. But anyway, it it would be fine. It, it wouldn't be anything that you would have to seriously worry about at all, man. So we'll see how this uh, apparent interest goes. We'll see if this is real, if this is significant or not, or we'll see if this just ends up. Being uh, yet another person that the Ravens are interested in where they either can't seal the deal or <laughs> some other team ends up sealing it for them. And they just got played in the whole equation of things. Um, so, again, I'll keep you all posted and I'm sure y'all will keep me posted as well. Uh, Jarvis Landry. Cool. Cool. But again, not not getting super excited over it because. Again, we saw how this offseason has been. And I know a lot of y'all are already super on guard. And y'all not letting just any report get you all hyped up and excited and whatnot. Because we need to see something significant. Now, one last thing. My dream scenario, I don't think it's likely it's not impossible, but I don't think it's likely. We did just saw a report today. We, we saw a report from uh, Pete Carroll from the Seahawks. I said, oh, yeah, we, we expect to get a deal done with DK soon. I was thinking, oh, yeah, okay, okay. But my personal dream scenario would be that with this Jarvis Landry thing, that could be a smoke screen. And I would hope that it would, and this is just me. This is just me, my own dream scenario. I would hope that it could be a smoke screen for the Ravens leaking that information. That they're interested in Jarvis Landry. Um, and it could be them trying to show to the Seahawks that if, if they had been in, the, in talks with the Seahawks for DK Metcalf, it could be the Ravens showing like, okay, hey, we willing to go in a different direction. Y'all might want to bring that price down just a bit because we willing to move on elsewhere. We don't have to give up draft picks to sign Jarvis Landry. We don't have to give up anything to sign Jarvis Landry because he, he's a free agent. So, Seahawks, if, if y'all want to really make this thing happen, y'all really want to make this trade happen, come on, let's get it. Because this could be their counter to the Seahawks report that came out earlier about Pete Carroll saying, oh, we, we plan on signing DK Metcalf soon. Because, again, it's a game within a game. But, again, that's just my own thoughts that I hope that it is. But we'll see. Team, keep it clean. I love y'all so much. I appreciate y'all. I hope y'all having a good Friday. And we out.